Yeah, you know, I try really hard to communicate that on our social accounts um, periodically throughout each year, but I don't know if everybody knows our story. So he was, um, he was abandoned on the side of the road near San Diego and was rescued by a shelter group down there and transported him up to LA. And I met him at a farmer's market in December of 2010 when he was a four month old puppy. And when I first saw him, he didn't have his signature smile and uh, he had on an oversized sweater and was shivering and looked like he really needed a loving home. So I decided to foster him and turned into a foster failure and ended up adopting him, which was not my plan. So Tuna is actually a derivative of Cartoon because when I first adopted him, I changed his name from Wormy, which is what the rescuer is calling him, to Mr. Burns. And all of my friends started calling him Burns and Bernie, and I didn't like it, so I nicknamed him Toonie, which is short for Cartoon. And then my nephew at the time was six years old and mistakenly thought that I was calling him Tuna and asked if that was his name. And in that moment, I changed it to Tuna because I just thought it was so appropriate for his personality. Right. <laughs> that was the greatest moment of my life when when I saw that Tuna had a Wikipedia page because I am a huge fan of Wikipedia um, and whoever created that content did such a great job at keeping the facts straight uh, they really did their research but yeah I am still in shock every day um, I try and keep my humility levels really high um, because I just feel like it is I feel very fortunate and blessed to be in this position because when I started my account I did not have any intention to garner this following and so I, I see it as a big responsibility to use this platform to bring people joy and laughter but also raise awareness for rescue groups which tune is a rescue so it makes a lot of sense for us Yeah, so we published a book called Tuna Melts My Heart, The Underdog with the Overbite. And um, it's about the day in the life of tuna, which is a really fun read. And um, one of my favorite career highs was we were actually featured on the cover of Southwest Magazine's In Flight Magazine in June 2015. And at the time, I didn't really realize what a big deal it was, and I didn't promote it. Um, I think I was a little shy, too. But it actually was such a great honor to be invited to have a story written about us where every person who fly that month saw, flew that month saw us on the cover of the magazine. Okay, typical day is Tuna um, sleeps, uses the restroom, plays a little bit, and then sleeps the rest of the day. So that is truly what he does. And then intermittently, I will take photos of him. But usually, it's of him in bed. Um, and then the overbite, there's no challenge because it's, it's a birth defect, but it doesn't affect how he eats. So he chews like we do with his back molars. Um, but I will say that to my advantage, it's great because it makes for really good photos. And he is so cooperative and it just lets me just take photos of him all the time and it's really sweet. He's like, we kind of have it to a science now where we work together. He's the best boss they ever had, by the way. You know what? I would really encourage people to just step outside of their comfort zone and adopt a dog that is either um, has a disability or a birth defect or um, a senior dog because those dogs really are in need of that second chance and, and the love that they deserve because they truly will change your life. The differences um, that like that they bring with like their features, uh, they're so heartwarming and people notice too and, and give that dog additional love, which is so incredible. And you know, there's nothing wrong at all about adopting a, a dog that like looks perfect, but I really recommend getting a dog that has uh, unconventional features because it's just cute and different. So I always say that, you know, it's important to be prepared and um, I definitely wasn't because like I said, I was just planning on fostering Tuna, but I ended up adopting him. And at the time I didn't really have a good job where it could help afford 
my lifestyle with tuna. And um, so now NextGuard has created this amazing website called itsadog.com and I am teaming up with them to promote it because I wish that it was around when I first adopted tuna because it's a really great resource to um, get some pet essentials where you can create a pet gift registry and then select some product for your dog and then share it with friends and family and they can help buy the gifts for you and just kind of allevi alleviate some of that financial burden. And then um, there's some great articles on there about bringing a dog into your new home and how they can get acclimated. And then now through October is a sweepstakes where you can win up to $500 in prizes for your dog each month, which is really cool. So what's next is that we are building our secondary account called The Traveling Tuna. And um, we also have a website called thetravelingtuna.com where Tuna is kind of becoming this ambassador for pet travel. And we're just uh, like basically providing an outlet for people who want to travel with their dog and kind of see where Tuna has gone. And, and then hopefully they follow suit because we stay at really incredible places across the U.S. and the U.K.